Welcome wherever you are watching around the world to the official live stream from the Sepang International Circuit here in Malaysia. My name is Jeevan Sovanon. Sitting next to me in the commentary box is Ross Yusof. For the first time ever, we're proud to bring you qualifying which is the official start, the real official start for the Pirelli Malaysia Superbike Championship 2018. Ross, we were here last year watching these guys out on track. What a great year it was. It was a superb year and super excited to be here for qualifying this year as yes, well. Yes, first so, time ever. Yep, two days over the weekend. Coming up first will be the Super 250 uh, qualifiers. And that's the circuit. They will. It's the full it circuit. It is the full circuit of 5.542 kilometers, 15 <laughs> corners. And that massive straight, 927 meters, that signature straight um, in Sabang. Yes, four qualifying sessions for the four classes of race that will be making up the Malaysia Superbike Championship this year. Super 250, Super Sport, Super Bike, and Super Stock. A lot of familiar names from the Malaysian motorsports community, as you'd expect here. Um, and we're going to be, we'll get you up to speed with exactly what happened last year, of course, in terms of points and also what has happened in free practice because there have been two practice sessions, one of which literally just finished. Yep, yep, yep. Weather-wise, it is extremely hot. Yes, I think that's the only way you can really <laughs> put it. There's no, uh, no, no showers forecasted for the afternoon, thankfully. So not, yeah, not yet. But they, they can come at a moment's notice. They can come at a moment's notice. I think probably the indicator that we have to look for here right now is we get a, a little shot of the pits. Of course, not open yet. I will go through some of the rules of qualifying. Um, there are just a, a couple of tweaks uh, which will get us ready for a big day of racing tomorrow. But the only thing you can look out for is the way those flags are actually waving right now. There isn't actually much ambient wind around. No. And therefore, you could say that for each of these half an hour, it's going to be four half an hour practice sessions that are happening 2.45 to 3.15 for Super 250, 3.30 to 4 for Super Sport, 4.15 to 4.45 for Super Bike, and 5 o'clock to 5.30 for Super Stock. And as you can see, all the riders are getting used to that we've also got a lot of uh times from free practice that we'll share with you as well but essentially yes there's gonna be half hour um qualifying sessions for each of those um classes and they will determine the two sessions that will be happening on race day tomorrow ross and i'll be at the circuit bright and early uh with you on the live stream at the nine o'clock start and they'll go all the way through to five o'clock in the evening two minutes away from the bikes moving onto the track and you can see the riders all Getting ready. themselves ready. Absolutely. That's Mohammed Fauzi Hassan. A brand new season awaits a lot of these riders. And who's going to tri be triumphant at the end of it? Yeah, as you can see, he's caught, caught a little bit in the headlights. They're not, they're not really <laughs> expecting all these cameras out of qualifying. Well, as I said, it's brand new uh, on the official live stream, which was, of course, started it started up last year with uh, Ross and myself here, not just for the uh, Malaysia Superbike Championship, but some of the other championships that happen around the Sepang International Circuit as well. Malaysia Championship Series already has had two rounds, the Touring Car, the National Touring Car Championship. This is the National Bike Championship, which means that if you are a rider of any class, basically from 250 cc all the way up to 1000 cc there is a spot for you somewhere up here and it might just be on the grid it might be watching of course you free grandstand you can definitely come up and uh, enjoy the racing and qualifying but it might also be part of the sic talent development program which is a really important thing that we um, that i have to mention because what that has been doing that's of course the in-house talent development program at the sepang international circuit and it's produced some fantastic riders and drivers mm. over the last two or three years it really has been wonderful to see um, them being taken through the uh, the racing calendar so as ross said we've got about a minute go to go that's the bike there of Angelo Neo. Now, so we'll one get you the, up to speed favorites. with what happened before, previously on the Malaysia Superbike Championship, is what you could say it is. Because um, all these classes, of course, were riding for Angelo Neo. I can tell you now, finished ninth Can't last year. Pretty good season for Angelo, all in all. He did actually get a good few finishes in there, um, but never up at the top of the podium. So, still a fair bit of racing for him. But as you can see them going out now, the Super 250s. This is another landmark year for the Superbike Championship. This is actually, believe it or not, Ross, about the 16th year 
that the Superbike Championship has been on. It's only been called the Superbike Championship for the last few years. It used to be called the Malaysian Super Series, but for about 16 years now, we've been seeing riders come through onto this track, world famous track, of course. And of course, with the track being roughly 20 years old, yeah. it means that this asphalt that you're seeing has uh, already produced some big names. Of course, the biggest one being Hafiz Sharin. Absolutely. This year, uh, riding in MotoGP. MotoGP will be back at the Sepang International Circuit. Absolute sellout over the last two years, I can tell you. 95,000 people. Uh, we've just got some information in from Race Control that unbelievably, I don't think I've, I've heard of this <laughs> being this, the track temperature. Ross just said it was very hot. 55.3 centigrade is what those tires you're watching have to deal with right now yeah you can see the heat waves coming off the track and uh yeah uh, it's gonna be that's chiral name kasim all hoping for good times today yep no set amount of laps that need to be done uh in the half hour period but there are some rules of course that dictate qualifying you can um as expected, I suppose, you could expect the pit lane rules to be... That's Surya Naraya. Well, he had a great season last Absolutely. year. Absolutely. fantastic. And was also fastest in free practice as well with a 2.34.347. It'll be interesting to see those sector times coming up now. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> it's all ready to go. <laughs> Abdul Hafiz Che Hussein there. Very excited. Now, there was a very interesting... I'm going to get to it now. It was a very interesting um, part of qualifying. There are some, as I said, pit lane controls, race control, as you'd expect, in full effect, almost at race standard. So pit, pit lane speeds, and of course, general etiquette towards your fellow drivers is expected as the riders all get out through turn one and turn two. This is gonna be the scene, Ross, of some hardcore racing tomorrow. Bikes going through that opening chicane. Absolutely. Decrease elevation. Saw a lot of well. excitement last year. Now, I'm just wondering if the track temperature is 55.3, is whether they're actually going to need a lap to warm up their tires <laughs> or not. That's it's not, it's not the same warming up, I can tell you. Having the, the bike out um, and really getting all those internal me mechanics at the same heat, the same level of temperature is important. Uh, right now, as you can imagine, the tires are a little bit hotter than the rest of the bike. There, you can see the details. By all means, get onto that site, very comprehensive site, www.sepungcircuit.com. The 2nd and 4th of November is the big one, MotoGP. As I said, Ross, last year and the year before, some 95,000 people up here in the stands. Brilliant Really stuff. amazing turnout. Of course, well, the riders love it as well. They've just finished the Spanish MotoGP at Jerez last weekend. That's right, we can actually. In, uh, so, finish around 16th. So it wasn't that bad. Uh, very exciting race, though. And that's what all these guys are aspiring. Yeah, if you can do. I mean, Hafiz has always been a very fast rider anyway. He was, Hafiz actually did drop into the Malaysia Superbike Championship he last year. He last year, yeah. <laughs> you couldn't really miss him because he was the one right out of the front. <laughs> for a, for a bit. He's going very nicely. But he's gone through Moto2 and, of course, there are Moto3 um, stars as well. Just give me some of those names. There's that's Af Daniel hey, that's, Bogus. That's actually Ross's Bike personal friend. <laughs> I, mean, I think he's qualifying to say that Ross does actually know Daniel Bogus. There you go, Ross. But uh, some of the names that have been uh, produced from the SIC Talent Development Program. Adam Noradin from Moto3. Afish Sharin, of course, from Moto2 to MotoGP. Kyle Idham in Moto2 was another one. Um, a lot of riders coming through. And it's not very often that you get the chance in your country, in your home country, to actually have a state-of-the-art circuit. Now, we're getting some times coming through. Vishwadev, uh, 238.733. That's an opening salvo. Yeah. Uh, two, that's his first lap completed. 238.733 is our current benchmark in the Open 250, or the Super 250, I should say. Interestingly, uh, Angelo Neo has the fastest sector one time. Yep, Tech Chow is also having a, a good sector one, 33.258. That's bike number 12 there in your picture. These three riders all acting as pacemakers for each other as they go around these opening laps. I can actually give you the times for those racings, uh, the, for the, the race slots for tomorrow. 9.15 will be the open 250, so a lot earlier for these guys and a lot, of course, um, 
less track temperature, yep. I would assume, at 9 o'clock in the morning. We'll, we'll let you know tomorrow when we're here. 10.15 uh, will be Super Sport, 11.15 will be Super Bike, and 12.15 will be Super Stock. Those are race ones. And then the race twos will happen. A bit of a half an hour break, and then from 1.15, 2.15, 3.15, and 4.15. So, so two, two big races. Completely different track conditions for, for races one Absolutely. and two. Absolutely, yeah. And that's going to be the, the real uh, benchmark of it. Of course, the MSBK Championship does, um, well, it's built around, I should say, Dorna regulations, as you'd expect, regulated by FIM. Angelo Neo has set the best lap time well, so well, well. far. 242.173. As I said, Angelo Neo, ninth in the championship last year. And, and had a few wins, but... Not far off is Cairo Anwar Jamil, 242.226. So coming through the back, no visible Daniel problems Ahmed so far. Surya Narayana is now 236, that's the fastest time. Wow, we've had two Bike seconds taken nine. off that already. Yeah. But we were expecting 234s. Surya Narayana in free practice did set that number nine bike. It was just in your screen. That's Angelo Neo there. But he set at 234. I'm just looking through Angelo's season last year. So far looking good. Now these bikes, all four classes that you'll be watching this afternoon, which we'll be watching with you. They really are knocking down those those times. Now Suri Nariana, 236.298. Closely followed by number 72, Amiral Afik. 237.158. Well, I'm rolls up there already. Yeah, yep, take Chow's third at the moment, 237.719. They're all very close, those three. So, in the end, first prize at the end of the season, looking around 3,000 bucks. That's Malaysian Ringgit, of course. That's one of the prizes plus the trophies. Of course, each of the classes will have different prizes but the points is really what they're going to be looking for 25 points for first 20 points for second 16 for third 13 for fourth 11 for fifth and then from six to 15th it drops down one point and that's what i was talking about with angelo neo because he did finish ninth last year but was always he had a sixth and he had a fourth those are both in round one and then after that it was Eighth. Well, someone stopped on the track there. But ended up with a total of 68 points. Now, he's actually dropped out. While I've been getting his, <laughs> his stats, he's actually dropped down a great deal. That is not Angelo Neo. It just so happened to be the only camera angle where we can't actually identify That's that bike. That's we'll Nariana you. in your picture. Fastest man on track at the moment, 236.298. Oh, definitely the tyres warmed up now, for sure. And as you can see, the sun blazing down up here, just about an hour out of city centre. The famed Sabang International Circuit. Into turn one. Quick roll over to turn two. And that is the difference with the bikes, isn't it? With, with bikes and cars, the fact you have that rolling line as you come through and well that looks like Zulfadli Ishak. Ishak yeah so a couple of incidents with a couple of bikes that had to stop everyone looks back on now I can tell you now there's about 24 bikes 25 bikes that are currently out on track Uh, there's a quick summary of what's going on. You can see Eddie Herman, Alan Harris, 
At least he torn up Dol Hafiz, he was just in the pits, 18 seconds off the pace. Still that 236-298 from Surya Narayana. AZ Motor Performance Racing that is leading the pack with Mohamed Amrul Afik in second, Yaptek Chow in third. So your top grid, your top row, would right now be Surya and Mohamed Amrul Afik. Row two would be Yaptek Chow and Vishwalev. If it stays like this, as you can tell, 19 minutes left in this opening qualifying session. Surya Narayana is putting in a really fast sector one in sector two. Well, that Honda CBR 250R that he's on has really been delivering. As we said, he was topping the free practice session beforehand with a 234. So he's still got a couple of seconds that he can take off, shave off that time. That's a faster sector three as well, 45.4. That's from three Surya of the, Actually, that's three fast sectors. Yeah. That's sector one, sector two, and sector three. Yeah, that's... Wow, alarmingly fast in sector one. 32.617. Mohamed Amirul Afik in second with a 33.207. So, gaining a full second through that first sector. Daniel Ahmad Sharil, 238, 220. How does that rack up? He's now currently fifth. Angelo Neo, by the way, uh, in practice, ended up in 15th with a 243. So he's already done a lot better than that. 241. 42, 895. Oh, 241, 774. That's right. And still, everyone. That's your man in your picture in bike number nine, Surya Narayana, has just gone by. Three seconds ahead of the pack right now. That's Daniel Ahmad Sharil in fifth at the moment. Well, it's interesting he's at 234. The lap record, of course, set by Sebastian Vettel in 2017 is 134. That gives you a good idea of the difference between an F1 car and a superbike. Getting around 15 corners in one and a half minutes. That's pretty impressive. That's going some. That is definitely putting your pedal to the metal. But that is an F1 car to get around on a bike in two minutes, two and a half minutes. Still down there, so you wouldn't. I was about to say it's a battle, but it's qualifying. Um, but they're both pushing each other on. Yeah, it's a good ride from Daniel Ahmed Sharil. And that's. So, Daniel Ahmed Charil, one of the members of the SIC racing team. That number 66 bike. As we said, a lot of these riders very familiar with this track as it's essentially home ground for them. And one of them is Daniel Ahmed Charil. It's the ZK racing team that you've got to look out for. That was set up this year. That is the in-house SIC, Sepang International Circuit team. And all of the up-and-coming riders, of course, part of that ZK racing team. So, Daniel Amacharel, part of the SIC Junior ZK racing team. Now, the, the other rider, uh, part of the SRC racing team is Harit Hazik. Bike number 99. And Daniel Al Fahim as well, uh, number 63. So look out for those. Very interesting developing story. Talents. Yeah, very interesting story. Not just that they develop talents, but as, as I said uh, a bit earlier, it's not very often that you get a beautiful circuit like Sepang International in your home country. So if you have got aspirations to be a rider, um, then you can come up to.